made a, a very uh, visionary decision to include the arts as a distinct indicator of school quality in Illinois' Estes State Plan. And in the arts, process is important. It's part of the learning and the co-creation. So we're going to start by giving some context, and uh, Carla's is going to talk about that and, and the process. Jonathan, Carla, real quick, just um, I know the board did that. We all had great conversation, but I do want to recognize Eligio's specific leadership in that. Um, if folks recall, during that conversation, he he raised some pretty thorny questions and then advocated that the board consider this. So I think we're sitting here, yes, the board and staff, but also specifically I think your leadership made this moment possible. So thanks, Tony. Just Thank you. Thank you, Leo. My pleasure. <laughs> Many thanks again to the board for uh, giving us this time. Um, in addition to my role as the Public Affairs Director at Ingenuity, it's also a privilege to be part of this work group as one is a graduate of public schools in Chicago and as a parent of a first grader. And so this work is incredibly significant for me, both professionally and personally. Um, as, J as Jonathan mentioned, in 2016, with broad support from across the state of Illinois, the ESB board made the bold and innovative choice uh, of including a fine arts indicator as a measure of school quality and student success for both elementary and high school. As such, this set the stage for the state to become a national leader in arts education. Currently weighted at zero, the board expressed a commitment to a path forward towards weighting the fine arts indicator and tasked a work group with developing the recommendations. And over the last year, uh, over the last year, and if the board accepts our recommendations, Illinois will be the first state in the nation to have a distinct weighted arts indicator for both elementary and high school. <clears throat> Um, our work group of 27 members, um, which I would like to acknowledge the work group members that um, are here today. Um, okay. Who you've also heard from a little bit earlier today. Um, it's a diverse cross-section of educators, school administrators, art education practitioners, teachers and advocates from across the state. An innovative measure also requires an innovative approach to developing these recommendations, and in that spirit, we also um, convened a data and research team that assisted us in making informed decisions throughout the year, which was crucial in narrowing down 42, 42 potential measures to the measure which my colleague will break down for you momentarily. From the onset of this process, we sought to be inclusive, collaborative, and transparent, and went further in developing our own work group principles that became essential at all stages of development. Uh, Jonathan will now go into the recommendations that we've developed. Yes, uh, the, to, to, to get into the, the recommendation and the measure itself, the measure actually um, consists of three sub-measures. And in the state plan, the board called for a nuanced measure. And that was our goal, to provide a, a multifaceted look at what's happening in the arts in the school. And so there are three sub-measures, uh, and my son's elementary school teacher says that fractions are fun, and they are, um, but we won't get too um, into the details, but the first sub-measure is simply participation. Are the students being engaged in the arts? And in the arts, uh, just as an aside, we mean music, dance, visual arts, theater, and media arts. The second sub-measure takes a look at quality, and it looks at quality through the lens of students receiving their instruction from arts-endorsed teachers. And then the third sub-measure involves student voice. The arts are particularly good at allowing students expression and giving them voice. And we talk about a student survey through which students could give their perceptions of the arts. It's very important to emphasize that with the first two submeasures, the ones that we're recommending be weighted, there's no extra burden of reporting for schools. This all uses data that is currently collected. The measure will be phased in over the course of five, uh, four years in order to give schools time to, um, to learn about it and to get things going. Uh, the measure will actually not start until the second year from now, 
so we're recommending 2020-21. And then it will start with participation, add the quality in the second year, and then student voice in the third year. We recommend that the indicator receive a weight of five points. And this would be equal to the other four school quality indicators. So it shows an equal importance, but in no way it supposes that it is more important. If we take a look at the points, it starts with five points towards participation in the first year. And then it adds uh, a point, uh, points for quality in the second year going forward. We also want to acknowledge that student voice or recognize that student voice we're recommending at 0% for now and in the third year because the work group had some questions about how it could occur. So it would give us time to, to look into it and study it and see if existing tools are possible. But in any case, it would allow for partial points. And this, in addition to the phase-in, this idea of partial points, um, provides one of, of, we believe, a view of, of equity, of recognizing the progress that's there and the progress that's in, occurring. And then we recommend that the ARCE indicator does something that no other indicator does, and that is actually adjust for school resources. And here's how we propose that it do that. The work group recommends that uh, adequacy threshold be set. What we said, and what we mean by that is we would look at the, um, the percentage of funding adequacy that that district has. For schools that are in districts that are in, are in lower funded, that lower funded districts, lower funding adequacy, the um, indicator would not apply to them in the first two years unless it increases their summative score. So it's not going to apply to them again unless it increases their summative score. So it goes beyond just holding them harmless. It recognizes those schools that are in lower funded districts but are doing it now, that are ahead of the game. And in that sense, it actually will make the system more equitable. ISBE would calculate whether or not it would apply the um, indicator measure both, uh, would apply it and then not apply it so that the school would automatically know whether or not it applies. The system was based on data, as Carla mentioned, and data oftentimes uh, makes us question our assumptions. And we had a surprising but sure finding in the data. And that finding was that in Illinois, arts participation and school funding, there appears to be no strong correlation between the two. Uh, and this was the most extensive analysis of statewide arts funding in Illinois ever. It looked at five years of data. And what we found, again, is that there appears to be no strong correlation. So if you look at schools that are in lower funded districts and schools that are in higher funded districts, and you ask what percent of schools in those districts, is, is it the case that half or more of their students are receiving arts instruction or enrolled in arts courses? When elementary, that's 79% in schools in higher funded districts. In schools in lower funded districts, it's 80%. Um, and that is a testament to some amazing school administrators and teachers that are making this happen in their schools. So in summary, um, you had the insight and the vision to include the arts as a distinct indicator of school quality. And what we bring to you today is a data-informed and data-ready measure. And it's one that's multifaceted. It provides a nuanced view. And it embodies, the arts indicator really embodies the whole child, whole school, whole community. It is educative. It is equitable. It is non-punitive. It has fairness built into it, being the only indicator to adjust for resources. The recommendation of the work group reflects the practical innovation that is exemplified by the arts. The arts are essential to a complete and competitive education for all students. And um, we're not asking that you sing or dance or draw, although I bet you can do it better than you think. Um, but we are asking that you approve this recommendation to empower Illinois students to dance and sing and draw. It will enliven them. 
It will equip them with the skills and knowledge to succeed in college and career, and it will allow all schools in Illinois to tell a fuller story of their success. So thank you for giving us this opportunity. Well, I just simply wanted to know why the Chicago Principals Association, have they asked their people if they wanted to support this? Did they get back to you? I, that I don't know. I, I don't have the answer to that. I see that's a footnote. Yeah, when the Illinois Balanced Accountability uh, Group met, I believe it was a couple of Mondays ago, uh, at that time when they were going around to see who, what organizations were in support, the Principal Association of Chicago could not, um, and as far as we know, has not taken a position on the indicator. Yeah. I'm a retired member. I will ask about it. But I'm glad to see that it's not punitive, which you're uh, uh, That's the big plus for me. We do not have any punitive issues in here. Thank you. Yeah, I would again like to commend the work group. I think it's, I uh, didn't know what you were going to come up with, but it's, you know, it's very interesting. And, and Neither I think, did we at the beginning. <laughs> you know, I think there are, are some uh, excellent components in here. You know, I think it will also be interesting to see what comments we get back, you know, in, in a month. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure the numbers, you know, this is one person speaking, you know, it might, you know, need to be looked at. But uh, I, I really like the non-punitive thing. Um, uh, the participation, the quality, and, and the voice. I think you've done a really good job with it. Thank you. Anyone else? I just had a quick question. So the there's the two-year phase in for schools that are below 60% adequacy, and your research also shows that there's no strong correlation between funding and participation. So I was curious what the thinking behind the phase and I not that I disagree with it at yeah. all, I'm just curious what the thinking behind that was. I think the um, you know, the, the, a lot of the look at the data did show that there appears to be no strong correlation. Um, again, we know it's a nuanced situation, so we wanted to provide time for schools and some and some adjustment too. So that um, there there appeared to be not a strong correlation, but still <laughs> given what we heard as a, as our principal and what we heard um, from work group members, we did want to make that adjustment. Kevin, do you have another question? Yeah. John, did you find a look at a correlation between um, funding and quality, the licensure issue, the second component? We did. We had actually an, an app or tool that Ingenuity created that um, took a look at how the indicator would affect school. So we were actually able to run it through um, the data. And when we looked at that estimate, it was a similar effect. In other words, when you look at the quality submeasure, there was not a, did not appear to be a strong correlation correlation between those either. Thank you. So I, I want to thank you for all your hard work. Obviously, this is terrific. I mean, I like Kevin. I wasn't sure where this was going to end up, and I would encourage you to continue with the advocacy. Uh, obviously, this is a process. Um, Unfortunately, it seems like when dollars are few and far between, the arts tend to take the brunt of it sometimes. And uh, from an equity standpoint, I'm a huge believer that, uh, you know, we have a responsibility for every child having a full education, which includes the arts. I think it's an essential part of um, getting a quality education. So I, I applaud all your efforts on that front and would encourage you just to continue your advocacy work. I, I know it's frustrating sometimes to not get exactly what you want, but uh, we end up with only what we advocate for, and so it's your hard work that gets us there, so thank you. Thank you. Do you want to talk about process, Sure. Just again, again to reiterate, uh, at the conclusion of the meeting today, uh, the ESSA webpage will be updated with the report uh, that you have in your blue folder as well as the IBAM response. Public comment will be open through February 6th, and the recommendation will be brought to you uh, in the, at the February board meeting on the 20th. Thank you. Thank you for your work. Thank you. Hey, Jonathan, I would just say, even if you don't draw well, um, <laughs> research, research is supporting that even if you draw better than making a list or singing a song, if you draw even a rudimentary picture, I agree. you remember I much, much better. Yeah, so doodles, doodles matter, folks. That's All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really good to hear from me. Thanks again. Uh, we will now hear the 